بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم يئس الذين كفروا من دينكم فلا تخشوهم واخشون اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون In the name of Allah the most merciful the most gracious Respectable audience, distinguished listeners and viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, God willing, we are going to talk about Imam Ali's Imamah in the light of the Quran. But prior touching and treating this important topic, let me update you with the previous lecture that we have presented for you, dear listeners. Let me have a brief revision of what we have said in the previous lecture. The previous episode covered the lexical and technical meanings of the hidden knowledge or knowledge of the hidden world and the proofs and the reasons which contributed that the Imams and the infallible Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household had this sort of knowledge and those characteristics that this knowledge enjoyed. We all touched these important issues and some of the doubts which have been raised by some of the Wahhabis and some of the people who negate having knowledge of the world of the unseen by the Imams or by the infallible, uh, infallible Prophet, all these doubts were refuted and we have offered an intellectual rebuttal of all these doubts and problems. Today, God willing, we are going to talk about those characteristics which Imams should fulfill and meet. One of those important characteristics that according to the Shia theologian, an imam or successor to the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him should fulfill and meet is that he has to be designated by divinity. He has to be appointed by Almighty Allah. Why? Because we did say that one of the important characteristics of imam is infallibility in his extensive knowledge. And this infallibility particularly cannot be understood, cannot be differentiated, cannot be discerned, save by Almighty Allah. So it is Almighty Allah who can discern who is infallible and who does not commit errors, mistakes and blunders throughout his life. So the human beings do not have this eligibility, they do not have this means to discern the people's infallibility because they are not aware of the people's intentions. They are not aware of the people's words, deeds, and actions. 
our behaviors. Even if they are aware, only they are aware of the outward actions and behaviors of individuals, not those actions which they do in their private life. So due to this, we believe that Imam should be infallible, so infallibility cannot be discerned save by Almighty Allah. So here the conclusion can be drawn, and that is that Almighty Allah should designate an Imam for the Muslim community, that he has to take the affairs of the Muslim community after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, now the question arises whether or not Almighty Allah has designated an Imam for the Muslim community, or has the final messenger of Almighty Allah, Muhammad peace be upon him in his household, introduced an Imam or a Caliph for the Muslim community, or not? He has left aside or he has left the Muslim community without pointing or without appointing a leader for them. Which one is true? Has Almighty Allah introduced a prophet? Has Almighty Allah introduced an imam? And then has our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, chosen a caliph or an imam for the Muslim community or not? He has left the Muslim community without any leader, without any caliph, and say that it is an affair that matters to you, or it is an issue that depends on the Muslims' vote. Whosoever they vote, or whomsoever they vote, he should be selected, or he has to be elected as a leader. We have to search in the chronic verses to find the responses of these questions. Whether or not our chronic verses has, have touched these issues. For sure, according to the Shiite theologians, there are a host of verses of the Holy Quran. There are ample verses of the Holy Quran that touch this important issue. One of those important verses which have explicitly dealt with this issue, I mean imamah, and that an imam should be designated after the demise of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household, it is in Surah Ma'idah verse number 55. Almighty Allah in this verse of the Holy Quran says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ O Muslims, our faithful people, your wali, he who rules over you, he is Almighty Allah. And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Innama waliyukumullah wa rasuluh. So after these two, who is the ruler? Who is to manage the Muslim affairs? Who is to be loved? Who is to be imitated? Who is to be followed after the demise of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household? Almighty Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Almighty Allah says this very important phrase. After the demise of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household, your wali, your ruler is he who has established the prayer, and while establishing the prayer, he paid his zakah, and he was in the bowing status. So you know that the occasion of revelation of these verses, a very lengthy story that cannot be covered in this very short episode, that it was Imam Ali al-Islam that while bowing, he was asked to give his ring. And it was Imam Ali al-Islam that he gave his ring to that beggar. And at that moment, while he was establishing the prayer in paying the zakah, Almighty Allah has sent this revelation. Almighty Allah revealed this verse of the Holy Quran that he is your wali, he is your ruler. So it is not something that has to be 
done by our holy prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in person. It is what Almighty Allah has ordered to our holy prophet that he has to be chosen as your leader. لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله So this verse of the Holy Quran has explicitly said that there are three important individuals that they have the authority, they have the governance over the Muslim community. First, that is Almighty Allah. Almighty Allah has authority over all the Muslims, all the individuals, all the men and women, making no difference. And after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whom we do not have direct connection with, who is our wali, who is our governor, administrator, so he is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the question again comes here, so after the demise of the Prophet, because the Prophets do not live forever in this world, a day comes that they will go. So after the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him, who is to cover their position in office? So Almighty Allah here again says explicitly that your governor, your ruler, after the demise of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him is this person who has given zakat while praying, while in the bowing status. So he is your ruler. In this verse of the Holy Quran, their obedience have been tantamount to Almighty Allah's obedience. If we want to follow our Almighty Allah's commandments, so we have to obey the commandments of our Holy Prophet and Imam Ali salam because he is deemed to be our wali, according to the explicit verse of the Holy Quran. Though you might ask this question that why? The very name of Imam Ali salam, has not been touched by Almighty Allah. So this is another question that can be dealt with in another a particular and independent session. This is a very, very important verse of the Holy Quran that touched the concept of what? Imama and Wilaya. Abstractly talking, this verse of the Holy Quran contains four priceless and precious lessons in notes for us that we have to keep them in mind. First is this that the word of wali in Mawla has been used in different senses. This is first. Secondly, the most suitable and the most opt and optimal we can say sense that can be taken in this verse of the Holy Quran, that is the leader, ruler, and administrator. So, though wali has come in the sense of love, affection, and like, to like someone else, but this concept, this sense cannot be suitable and cannot be true in this verse of the Holy Quran. Third, wali in this verse of the Holy Quran has been applied to Imam Ali alayhi salam. In fourth, Imam Ali alayhi salam has been designated, has been chosen as the Muslim community leader and ruler. So all these four points should be taken into account. Once again, I do reiterate so that it must be, we can say, well, fully established, fully substantiated. The first is that there are various meanings for Mawla and Wali. The second point is that 
the wali has come in the sense of leader, administrator, and ruler in this verse of the Holy Quran. The third is the extension or misdaq or the example of this wali in this verse of the Holy Quran is Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the fourth is that Imam Ali alayhi salam, in accordance with this verse of the Holy Quran, has been designated as Muslim leader by Almighty Allah. For Almighty Allah has authorized, for Almighty Allah has given this permission that he has to be designated as Muslim leader. So after the demise of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household, Imam Ali is the one who meets all these characteristics. He enjoys infallibility, he enjoys extensive knowledge. He is the one who has been explicitly designated as the Muslim community leader and ruler. No other individual parallel to Imam Ali salam, meets all these characteristics. <laughs> So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, may this question arises in our dear friends or our dear fellows' minds that we are from, we have to get certainty, we, are, we should be made sure of that wali comes in the sense of leader, administrator and ruler, not in the sense of lover and, for example, helper. We believe that in this verse of the Holy Quran, there are various signs that help us understand that in this particular verse of the Holy Quran, Wali has come in the sense of ruler and leader, not in the sense of, we can say, helper or lover. Our Sunni brothers, commentators, they have said that this verse of the Holy Quran does not tell us about the concept of wilaya. Rather, it says that these are the people whom you should love. Almighty Lord do not, does not introduce the people whom should they lead the Muslim community. No, they are the people whom should be loved by the Muslim community. But it does not seem to be true because of the contextual signs we have in this verse of the Holy Quran. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, this verse of the Holy Quran tells us two important concepts. The first is wali, he who has to rule, he who has to lead, he who has to administer the affairs of the Muslims. And the second concept is muwalla alayh who is to be governed, whose affairs to be managed. So these two are two important and independent concepts. If it comes in the sense of love, so the Sunni brothers believe that all the Muslims are one another's lover, one another's helper. This verse does not imply the sense of administration or leadership. Rather, it means or it implies and connotes love and affection. Meaning that they should help one another or they should love one another. But from the internal contextual signs, we understand that wali and muwalla alayh cannot be one single people or one single individual. If all the Muslim people, all the Muslim community cannot be wali and muwalla alayh at the same time. No, this wali and muwalla alayh, it should be different from one another. It does not mean, it does not have sense that wali and muwalla alayh, both of them should be one.
No, Almighty Allah says, these are your ruler. These are the people by who your affairs would be managed. Since wali in walla alay cannot be applied at the same time to the people, so muwalla alay in wali should be to different and separate individuals and people. So due to this, we believe that wali in this sense, in this verse of the Holy Quran means leader and ruler, and that is Imam Ali in this verse of the Holy Quran, and Allah Almighty and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. They are called wali. They are the people who have to administer and rule over the people, who have, who have to govern over the people. So who are the muwalla alay? They are the Muslim community. If we have this subtle difference keep in mind, if we keep in mind this subtle difference, then we cannot dare say that wali and muwalla alay can be people. No, it is wrong. Another question, it might click your mind, and it is this, that has it come, has it happened in the Holy Quran that wali or mawla should be used in the sense of supervisor, leader, and ruler or not? Has it been used in the Holy Quran in other verses that we should say it is another evidence or not? It is solely used in this verse of the Holy Quran. If it has been used only in this verse of the Holy Quran, so the Sunni brothers would have had this right that they should claim that only you have one time or one place that it has been used in this sense. But we believe that there are many other places where the word of wali in Mawla has been used in the sense of supervisor, in the sense of the people who manage the affairs of other ones. For example, in Surah Asra, this verse of the Holy Quran has been used in the sense of supervisor, such as, وَمَنْ قُتِلَ مَظْلُومًا فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيِّهِ سُلْطَانًا The translation is, whosoever has been killed in an unjust manner, we have given this authority to his supervisor, to his wali, that he has to be able either to forgive the killer or to retaliate. So this sense has been also used at the sense of supervisor, he who supervises the children's affairs. Or in another verse of the Holy Quran, which is the lengthiest verse of the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah says, so this verse of the Holy Quran talks about taking, we can say, loans or giving loans. So when you're taking or giving loans, there should be people that they have to write down or jot down this contract or this treaty that on the next day there should be no conflicts or it's skirmish between the Muslim individuals. All these legal we can say precautions are taken so that the lesser conflicts should be witnessed in the Muslim community. So in this verse of the Holy Quran again, wali has been used in the sense of supervisor, in the sense that he supervises and manages the affairs of another one. Actually, he rules the affairs. <laughs> So, what we can conclude from this verse of the Holy Quran, it is that wali has been used in different senses, and it is not exclusively talking about the helper and the contributor or cooperator, rather it also talks about ruler, administrator, supervisor, and manager. 
So when there are various verses of the Holy Quran touching the sense or the concept of supervisor, we cannot say that it has only been used in the sense of where we can say helper, so that we should negate Imam Ali salam's imama from this verse of the Holy Quran. No, this verse of the Holy Quran explicitly touches imamat of Imam Ali salam. So this topic that today we deliver to you, dear listeners, it was Imam Ali salam's imama in the light of the Quran. So we touch some important verse of the Holy Quran that they were touching Imam Ali salam imama, particularly the 55th verse of the Surah Ma'idah. Innama waliyukumullah wa rasooluhu wa alladheena amanu alladheena yuqimuna as-salah wa yutuna az-zakah wa hum raki'oon. May Almighty Allah bless us all that we have to understand truly the teachings of Islam and then apply them in our own practical life so that we gain eternal felicity and happy life. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anfa'na bil'ilm wazayyinna bil'hilm wajammilna bil'afiyah وكرمنا بالتقوى إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين